to go. So let's go as we have Simon Gratz. They've been here so many times before. And Strawberry Mansion trying to win in their first trip to the Public League Boys Championship game. There are your officials, Mike Chesney, Jeff Hill, and Carl Garlitos. And we are ready to tip it off at the Leah Corris Center. We know a team in red and white is going to win this, and Manchin gets the opening tip, and they bring the ball into the forecourt. Daryl Jones gets it outside. That's Gregory Fatty Cunningham, he likes to be called, and they're going to move the ball around quickly. Maurice Rice, the freshman, gets it down low to Daryl Jones. Back out to Maurice Wright, playing catch with Cunningham. Back over to Jones. Cunningham thought about it, didn't take it. Rice will, doesn't get it. But Strawberry Mansion gets the rebound. He's number 33, Omar Thomas, arguably the best player in this game, perhaps the best player in the city next to Eddie Griffin, got that rebound, and they set again. Omar Thomas with the basketball right now. He loses it out of bounds, and here comes Simon Gratz. That's good, and it's bad. It was good that Strawberry Mansion was able to probe and get a second opportunity, but the Gratz defense which is one of the real keys, was able to dig in and cause a turnover. Mansion pressing right off the outset, but here comes Gratz into the fourth court. Purcell Coles is going to put it up. It doesn't go. Rebound, though, comes down to Sean McKee. He loses it. Mansion loses it out of bounds as Daryl Jones tried to save it, and Simon Gratz will retain position. Of course, a lot of famous basketball names on this Gratz team with McKee and Stokes. Sean McKee, the nephew of the Sixers' Aaron McKee. Yes, and these youngsters grow up under that kind of uh, impression of the older guys, and Sean is a, a mirror image of Aaron McKee. You watch the way he runs the ball club. He thinks the game of basketball. And much like his uncle, he talks about how much he likes to play at the defensive end of the court. He gets the ball over to Anthony. Anthony Abrams, Sean McKee gets the ball inside. Good defense by Manchin. They are relentless at the defensive end. And right there, they end up with the ball, Omar Thomas. As they come up across center court, Daryl Jones into the forecourt. He's got that man that we've talked about a lot over on the right wing there. He gets the ball over to Maurice Rice, only a freshman. Listen to this man, very, very physical. As we said in our roundtable before the game, he's been a schoolboy legend since the age of 10. Daryl Jones gets it over to Maurice Rice. Rice back outside the Jones for three. Nothing is going, so we've gone over a minute and a half with no score. As Tony Abrams brings it up for Gratz, gets it to Sean McKee. He stepped out of bounds, and Strawberry Mansion will have it in a still scoreless game a minute and 42 seconds into the first period. And here, the other Sonny. thing you have to understand is that the nervousness, the butterflies with both ball clubs are at extreme high. Gratz will be able to deal with it much easier than Mansion because they have not been here before, and that's why you see the emotional aspect of the game right now. All right, we have Gregory Cunningham with the ball. Gets it over to Daryl Jones. He moves towards the hoop, gets the bucket, and our first score of the game goes to the Knights of Strawberry Mansion, and immediately they go into their press against Simon Gratz. McKee gets the ball over to Purcell Coles. Back to McKee. Up into the fourth court, Brandon Thompson, and great defense right there by the freshman Maurice Rice. Can he finish? Yes, he can, and Strawberry Mansion up four to nothing. Now the press was set up to slow Gratz up, but once Gratz hesitated in the back court, the press became more aggressive, caused a turnover. Gratz into the fourth court. They're trying to get their first points in the game. Great, great dish there. Purcell calls into T.T. Stokes. He is fouled, and he's going to go to the line. Just want to set for those of you who watch the girls game, there is a 30-second clock in girls' public league basketball, not in the boys. And in fact, in their semifinal victory over Albany, Gratz actually went into a stall, Sonny. Yes, but when we look at Purcell Coles on two plays, the jump shot he took early that he missed, and this play here, he's playing with the confidence of a senior and he's also playing with a nice, ease and flow to his game. And here's the replay that shows the foul that was committed there on Purcell Coles. Purcell Coles had 20 points in that win over Ollie. One and two at the line, and it's a 4-1 lead for Manchin. Gratz showing a little bit of pressure, easily broken. Obar Thomas into the forecourt. Look at him operate, draws the foul right there as Brandon Thompson didn't have much of an option right there as he had a foul. The very, very elusive Omar Thomas. Well, the key to it was as quick as the ball was rebounded, the quickness of Strawberry Mansion with Omar Thomas with the ball. And the thing about Omar is that his talent is not only physical, but also from a mental point of view. He understands how to play the game. And in the semifinal victory that got Strawberry Mansion to the championship game, he had 26 points and 11 rebounds, beating Martin Luther King. Omar Thomas misses the first, and the lead remains at 4-1 to one for Simon Gratz trailing Strawberry Mansion. Mansion will try to go to 5-1 to one right here. Omar Thomas with the second of his three throws. 
He converts it. It's again a four-point lead for the Knights of Strawberry Mansion, and they keep that backboard pressure up, Sonny. Yeah, but this time, the Gratz team brought the high man lower, so therefore they're able to break the pressure. The last time, the middle man was up too high, and the pressure caused the turnover. And here's that deliberate Gratz half-court offense as they try to get the good shot. They get the corner shot there for Purcell Cole. Doesn't go. Here comes 22, Daryl Jones for Strawberry Mansion on the other end. Up. No good. Rebound right there by Terrence Stokes. And here comes Gratz, and they're going to run it a little bit. Bring it into the fourth court. Anthony Abrams inside. Going to go up himself, and he is called for the player control foul, so it goes over to Strawberry Mansion. And that's Sean McKee's fault because he gave the ball up too early. I was really expecting him to be able to get a situation where, see, he gives the ball up early there to Anthony Abrams, and by him getting the ball, he's out of control. Sean should have pulled it up, ran his offense. Okay, Gregory Cunningham brings it over half court for Strawberry Mansion. They're back on the offense right now. Number 22 is Daryl Jones. He's averaged 16 points, six boards a game this season for Strawberry Mansion. Into the corner. That's the guy that got a hit for them outside to help take some of the scoring load. Gregory Cunningham does, and it is an eight to one lead for Mansion. Sean McKee into the four court. Gets the ball over to Tony Abrams, back to Sean McKee. Good pressing defense here by Strawberry Mansion in the half court. Gets the ball to Terrence Stokes. Outside to Tony Abrams. Doesn't go. Right there for the rebound. Number 22, Daryl Jones, bringing it down for Strawberry Mansion. Into the fourth court. Cunningham looking at his options. 8-1 lead right now for Mansion. No on the three. Yes, though, on the Maurice Rice attempt. It doesn't go, and here comes Gratz. Sean McKee, the ball out of bounds to Gratz. So we're midway through the first period, and Gratz only one point so far, Sonny. And the game is too fast. The game is in a windshield wiper on fast. Gratz needs to slow it down and make it on hesitation. And Gerald Hendricks likes that windshield wiper. Right now, his Strawberry Mansion Knights up 8-1 to one as the Public League Boys Championship rolls on. We are back in the Leocor Center. Simon Gratz trying to climb back into it. They're down 8-1, to one, just under the four-minute mark, the halfway point of the first quarter here. Sean McKee deliberately brings it to the half court over to Tony Abrams. Zone defense from Strawberry Mansion, very effective so far. Not a lot of good looks, Sonny, for Gratz so far. Well, even when they've got a look, they haven't been able to put the basket in. And that's not Gratz's strong suit. They're not a strong offensive team. They get a lot of their offense from the strong defense, turnovers, and opportunity to score from their defense. All right, Terrence Stokes fouled there by Maurice Rice. Non-shooting foul, so Gratz will inbound it. They get it right back to Terrence Stokes. Strong move for the hoop, doesn't get it. Omar Thomas, the big guy with the rebound, and here come the Knights once more. Deliberately, Gregory Cunningham tries to get the look that he wants. Gets the ball right over to Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones back out to Cunningham. Cunningham trying to get it inside Omar Thomas. The ball is loose, and it's going to go out of bounds to Simon Gratz. Omar Thomas, as we've been saying, a Division I prospect. There are probably half a dozen of them out here, but the key for the night season, they got balance. Yeah, and on, the, uh, on their ball club, here's good defense on the part of Gratz. Aggressive, go after the loose ball, give their body up, get a turnover, get a score. And at the other end, they get another good look that time, but Brandon Thompson's shot does not go, and Manchin comes up with it. Cunningham into the forecourt. Omar Thomas back outside to Cunningham. He'll swing it over on the right-hand side, gets the ball to Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones very deliberate as the Knights protected an 8-1 to one lead here, five minutes into the first period of the Public League Boys Championship. Back outside to Cunningham, thinks about it, gets it over to Daryl Jones on the right wing, back to Cunningham. They're going over to Omar Thomas, goes towards the hoop, up and good. And that's the reason why he is thought of as being a tremendous D1 prospect, Sonny. Makes good decisions, got the ball, read the defense, put the ball on the floor for a baby dribble. Nice stop, pull-up jump shot. Simon Gratz still looking for their first field goal of the afternoon as they get the ball back out to Sean McKee. Plays catch with Purcell Coles, gets it to Terrence Stokes, back to McKee. And again, two matching players come over to help out as that zone has been very effective so far. Sean McKee will reset. Good decision by Sean not to pull the trigger early. Probe, Gratz just wants to stay around the ball game until the second half. And there's McKee, baseline, three defenders there. But the rebound goes, and it's going to be a bucket for Brandon Thompson. He is fouled, so a three-point play could cut it to a 10-4 advantage for Manchin. Here's what Gratz does very well. Ball goes up physically and strong for three. And what the Strawberry Mansion has to do is understand they've got a block out and they've got to hold their block out because of the physicalness 
of the Gretz team. And good offensive rebounding by a couple of guys there. Brandon Thompson got the ball, but also Terrence Stokes was going to the offensive board. Thompson, the tallest player on the court today at 6'8", and the first sub of the day, Michael Blackshear Jr., a sophomore who you say is a real good one now in the game for Gretz. Well, he's, uh, he's the physical player, and he will begin to impose his will on the game if Gretz is going to be able to cut into this lead. Cunningham into the forecourt. Omar Thomas, and he's going to be called for a walk. So it's a 10-3 lead for Manchin, but Gratz has the ball left with 1.58 to go in the first period, and Manchin immediately resets into the press that has worked pretty well, but I've been more impressed with their zone defense once you get into the half court. Well, don't forget it's a neighborhood game. This is two North Philadelphia teams. They know one another, and in turn, they not only play in school, but play outside against one another. And Sonny, you're much too modest, but seven or eight of the kids on the court at any time have played in Sunny Hill-sponsored leagues here in the city of Philadelphia. Sean McKee trying to set the offense, trying to get that good look that Sonny's been talking about. Gets the ball inside to Purcell Coles. They go back outside to T.T. Stokes. Sean McKee's going to reset it, and since there's no shot clock, he can do this. Yeah, but not only that, but the game is now being slowed down, and that works to Grant's advantage. Way off by Sean McKee, but again, Brandon Thompson back with the offensive rebound, and it's a 10-5 game. And again, being physical. Offensive rebound, let's get after it, and that's what they were able to do. It's not only position, it's crashing the boards literally, and it works there. It's a 10-5 Manson lead, and Gratz is going to get the ball right back again here on the turnover by Daryl Jones. So Gratz picking the pace up. If I'm the coach, I'm concerned now because I can sense that the beat of the game, the rhythm of the game, is changing towards Gratz. And Bill Ellerby was very calm and composed when his team fell behind early, as was his floor leader, Sean McKee, out on the court, reflected his coach's demeanor. Purcell Coles trying to get a look on the right wing. Back out top to Sean McKee. They swing it over to Terrence Stokes. He and McKee are playing catch. Michael Blackshear at the high post right now, the new player in the game for Gratz. Stokes gets it inside to Thompson. There's Michael Blackshear, the sophomore. Strong move from the hoop, and it's a 10-7 game. Did he take a blow down low? He's Hung physical. in there. Physical completes the play. Exactly what you had talked about coming into the game. This is a very physical Gratz team. They like it that way at both ends of the basketball court. All right, Daryl Jones is going to try to slow it down and reset for Strawberry Mansion. He looks over to his bench and Coach Gerald Hendricks as they're going to try to get a bucket. They've had a couple of droughts coming down the last few trips. That's not good for Strawberry Mansion because now they're playing in the hand of Grass. The game is slowing down. They want to make sure that they can keep a fast pace even if the clock is running out. Five seconds to go and from the corner, a big, big hoop by Gregory Fatty Cunningham. 13 to 7 is going to be your score at the end of the first quarter. So getting that at the end of the quarter, a very, very nice ending to an excellent first quarter for Strawberry Mansion. We'll be back with the second quarter of an outstanding public league championship game. Strawberry Mansion leads it by six. fan for Strawberry Mansion today, Kyle Hendricks, the son of Coach Gerald Hendricks, who goes to Bodine High, but he was well on his way to becoming an Olympic caliber swimmer for the great Jim Ellis at the PDR Department of Recreation Swim Program, was paralyzed in an accident a couple of years ago, and he's a source of tremendous inspiration to his father, Gerald Hendricks, who says he wants to win this one for Kyle. We start the second quarter. Gratz will inbound it. They're down 13 to 7 to Gerald Hendricks Mansion team. Very deliberate pace again. Got the back into it, but also the physical play. Brandon Thompson from outside battle for the boards, and it's going to go over to Strawberry Mansion. Now again, we see the deficiency in Gratz with the fact that they're not a good shooting team. That was a quick shot. They don't need that kind of quick shot. Strawberry Mansion has to take advantage of that. Now Gratz is coming out with full court pressure. Manchin had slowed it down at the end of the first quarter to get that successful last shot that gave him the 13-7 lead. Interesting to see if they're going to play more deliberately or try to move fast. Doesn't matter on a turnover here. Terrence Stokes, he's got help, tries to get the ball to Sean McKee, but it's intercepted, and here comes Omar Thomas for Manchin at the other end. Pulls up. Oh, I like nails it. it. Old-time basketball. Pull up on the fast break with the sweet 13-foot jumper. And again, they have more than doubled grats at 15-7. Michael Blackshear into the fourth court. Back out top to Sean McKee. They swing the ball to Purcell Coles. Coles back out top to McKee. Good defensive pressure again for Manchin all over the court. Michael Blackshear loses the ball. The defensive pressure plays off. Here's Maurice Rice. He goes strong to the hoop, and it's a 10-point advantage for Manchin. Now this is when Gratz has to step off and realize they can't trade baskets. They've got to depend on their game plan. 
Manchin on the other side has to accelerate the fact that they've got the game going at a faster pace and they're taking advantage of it. Gerald Jones with the foul there and he is down right now after a little contact underneath there. We're going to take a look at the replay. We'll try to see what happened here to Daryl Jones as his teammates are attending to him, and now the referee is signaling for help. What happened on the play? The knee hit his thigh, and uh, that is one of those things that, ouch. Absolutely. Strawberry Mansion right now not ouch when it comes to the scoreboard. They are up 17 to 7. Right now for them, Gregory Fatty Cunningham has six points. Omar Thomas, who just hit that very nice pull up, he has five. And what you have to do when you get uh, one of those ouches like that is get some ice on it because as the game progresses, it'll tighten up on you. Come out in the second half, and all of a sudden, you don't have the, the movement you need. Senior-dominated team, so Levi Lamar, a senior, comes in and joins the mansion attack, and he's the guy coming up court right now as they get ready to move into the offensive end. That is Fatty Cunningham out top. Gets the ball over to Daryl Jones. Jones over to Lamar, back out top to Jones. Lamar Jones playing catch. Lamar advancing, pulls up, in and out. And here comes Simon Gratz with the board. Terrence Stokes going to take it all the way himself. Gets the bucket, gets the foul, and again, very physical, goes strong to the hoop. And not only that, but not getting back. Strawberry Mansion was slow and hesitating and get back, and Stokes was able to recognize that. And as you said, went to the basket strong and physical, so he's able to complete and now go to the foul line for the three. So take a look at Terrence Stokes, the Stokes name very famous in Philadelphia basketball and Simon Gratz basketball. Misses the first, but a good offensive rebound. There's that smart play by Sean McKee, and he's going to start to run the offense out on top. And the, and the thing about it, as you said, uh, Tyler, is that he was smart enough to bring it back out, let's reset, and get another shot. And there's that Michael Blackshear, the sophomore, who's a real presence inside, plays much more maturely than a sophomore. He had 12 points and perhaps more importantly, 10 rebounds in the win overall, need to get them to the title game. But more important, he's almost a mirror image of his dad. Uh, taller than his dad. His dad was a guard, but his dad had the same kind of physical traits, and that's what he has. He's aggressive, he's physical, he's tenacious, and you cannot stop him or deny him. Blackshear misses the first. We saw a shot of Bill Ellerby talking to Purcell Coles, and that's part of the Ellerby style, that when there's a free throw situation, he will bring one of his guys over, make those subtle adjustments that's won him so many games. In fact, it has won him a total of 408 games at grass. 17 to 10, six minutes to go in the first half of your Public League Boys Championship game. Gratz with a good pressure right there. Brandon Thompson very, very aggressive, a little too much so, and he gets called for the foul. Well, he was hesitant. He saw the pass, but he couldn't move his legs. I mean, you and I, we saw the pass, but he couldn't move his legs. And when he decided to move, it was an instant too late. Levi Lamar right in front of us is going to inbound the ball. He gets into Fatty Cunningham. He's done a nice job so far of running the Mansion offense. They have a couple of guys who could do that. He pulls up for the long three-quarter and doesn't do. Battle on the boards. Foul call underneath. They're going to call that right there on Omar Thomas. And we're going to go to the other end. Let's watch this. A quick shot. Good, strong position inside. And that's where they call a foul on Thompson. In fact, Omar Thomas talked himself out of that foul because there was contact right there. And the officials rule it the other way, as you mentioned, Brandon Thompson. So Manchin's going to retain the ball. Fatty Cunningham out top. And again, a little bit more of a deliberate style by Manchin. They're up seven now. Over to Lamar. Back outside to Cunningham. Down the right wing to Maurice Rice. Back over to Lamar. Back so they don't, but they don't want to become too tentative in what they're doing because their style isn't to be into the set that long and if that continues their shots won't fall with the same consistency cross court pass to rice out to omar thomas who came outside to get the ball back to rice goes for three doesn't get it physical battle under leaf one of the smaller guys levi labar gets the rebound and he's going to go to the foul line now quickness that time was the key for Strawberry Mansion. They were quick to the offensive rebound and negated 
Michael Blackshear. Watch this. Michael Blackshear tries to come physical. Quickness knocks the ball loose, and they're able to come up with the offensive rebound. And now two shots at the foul line. Levi Lamar got a nice gift, and now he gets two more of them at the line right here. 18 to 10 for Manchin. As you look at Gerald Hendricks again, he's won 232 games in his great career at Strawberry Mansion, but this is his first title game, and his guys right now have him a nine-point lead with a little over five minutes to go in the first half. Full-court pressure for Strawberry Mansion again. Stokes gets back over into the center court, and they get the ball into the forecourt. Michael Blackshear back out to Sean McKee. Over to Purcell Coles, doesn't go. Rats whistled for the loose ball foul, and they're going to give the ball back over to Manchin. So Manchin has the ball and a nine-point lead, and they're doing a nice job at both ends of the court right now, Sonny. Fouls on Blackshear as he was trying to block out, and uh, what Rats is having difficulty with is finding anybody who can make a shot outside of 15 feet. All of their scoring has been inside. They've been able to get some decent looks outside. Coles, in particular, has had some great looks. He's shooting with confidence, but his confidence of putting the ball in the basket is just not there. Even though he has three fouls, Omar Thomas is remaining in the game right now for Strawberry Mansion. Mansion on the offense, Fatty Cunningham directing traffic. Gets the ball to Levi Lamar. There's Thomas underneath. Doesn't go. He's battling for the rebound. And here comes Simon Grass on the break. Sean McKee taking himself all the way. Very pretty move for the bucket. 19 to 12. The lead is cut to. And what you can't do with Gratz is let them stay around the game because the game tends to move in their direction. So you don't want to let them just stay around the game. Omar Thomas is ruled to have touched that ball last. Michael Blackshear in a little bit of pain, but what a hustle effort to get the ball back for Gratz. Pain means nothing to the Blackshear family. He's expected to get up. And here's how he did it, as we see pressure at all ends of the basketball court and in the middle as well. Right there, Michael Blackshear ends up getting the ball back for Gratz. And now Gratz will try to cut into the lead that is at seven. Michael Blackshear does not get the bucket, but good hustle. Tries to save it, but out of bounds to Strawberry Mansion. Subs coming in. Blackshear shot the last time. That was kind of quick. That's not really his game at this point, uh, taking quick shots. He can take good shots, but not quick shots. Afumiya McFadden is in for Simon Gratz right now, so they're getting more bodies into the basketball game. Manchin loses the ball. It's good pressure from the Gratz defense. Sean McKee gets the ball deep into the forecourt to Purcell Coles. Back out to McKee for three. In and out. Battle for the boards in Strawberry Mansion as Lamar is cherry picking and it pays off with two more. Mansion up 21 to 12. Now that's called bad floor balance. Quick shot here. Nobody rotates back and they get an easy basket at the other end. Foul on Strawberry Mansion. So Simon Gratz is looking at a nine point deficit. Four minutes to go in the first half. But knowing Bill Ellerby as you do, Sonny, they're going to continue as we look at the last bucket with what you were Let's, talking about. He'll stay with the Well, we system. missed a quick shot, but the look up the floor because nobody rotated back. See, once Sean McKee shot, he instinctively looked at the ball. Nobody rotated back. Easy basket the other way. Terrence Stokes at the line. The Gratz makes the first. 21 to 13 is your Strawberry Mansion advantage midway to the second of four periods here today at the Leah Chorus Center. Stokes with both of them, and again, Gratz will pick up with full court pressure. They've had some success with the pressure, getting turnovers or disrupting. There is a turnover. Sean McKee gets the steal, goes strong in the hoop, and he gets the foul call on Levi Lamar. So the nice thing about Sean McKee, and you said it all afternoon, is he not only knows what to do in terms of trying to get the ball, once he gets it with the defensive stop, he knows what to do with it offensively. And the other thing that we spoke about is the Gratz will. Gratz can will itself on the other team. He has good instincts by Sean McKee. Goes to the basket strong, knows that he's going to get fouled because he puts his body up against the defensive player. So he's coming at it with either or. That's good on his end. He's got to make foul shots. And you talk so much as we look at Bill Ellaby about positional basketball, and people think of that in terms of rebounding a lot, but they're using it to shield your body and get the foul. That's a heady veteran player move. 
Well, when you've been around the game and you've been around good, strong people, certainly growing up and your uncle is Aaron McKee, that certainly helps you a great deal. All right, Sean McKee has cut the lead to six. Simon Gratz trails Strawberry Mansion 21 to 15. 3.53 to go in the first half at the Leah Chorus Center. They're back courtside, Don Tolleson along with Sonny Hill. I cannot wait, and in particular, you and I were talking about this during halftime of the girls' game, but these are two very contrasting styles. Strawberry Mansion, a team that has scored over 100 points four times a year uh, this season, and Simon Gratz is a team that does not want to give up anything over 50 points. Well, uh, to me, that's going to be the most important thing. When you look at a basketball game, at least through my eyes, I'm looking at the first two or three minutes, particularly in the eight-minute quarter, and I want to see whose will can be imposed on the other team. And if it's an up-and-down game, that's not good for Gratz. But if it's a game where the game goes like in slow motion when you turn your windshield wipers on, that's good for Gratz. So between the two teams, it's the style of play that's most important. And we're looking there at Gerald Hendricks in his 19th year at Strawberry Mansion, gets to the championship game. Of course, he played at Gratz in both football and basketball. And then on the other side for the Bulldogs, the man who seems to be on the sidelines of almost every public league boys championship game the legendary bill ellerby who has sent so many players to division one college basketball players like rasheed wallace on to the nba and as you were saying earlier sonny there is a bill ellerby system that gets the job done no matter the changing nature of his players year to year well let's go over to temple announcer right now sonny hill we're going to go over to chuck hyman our temple announcer for your lineups for both the bulldogs of gratz and the knights of strawberry mansion we hope you're enjoying the boys matchup in case you missed it flc university city was just prior to this and it was a decisive win by university city let's check out ebony twigs our mountain dew player of the game she had 21 points 15 rebounds with the 65 47 uc win over flc don and sunny back to you all right here's your set in the boys game right now strawberry mansion up by six they're going to inbound the ball 3.53 to go in the first half. Again, full-court defensive pressure coming up from Gratz. And, and the key to this is how will Strawberry Mansion react to it? Levi Lamar had the turnover the last time down. He does a nice job there. And Maurice Rice, the outstanding freshman, running it out top, gets over to Gregory Cunningham. The turnaround from Omar Thomas. There's only one word for that, so weak. And I call that big boy shot. And the key to it is that he didn't give the defense a chance to recognize what he was going to do. Caught it turned around shot it and with that bucket right now strawberry mansion 9 of 15 from the field by contrast simon gratz 5 of 19. purcell coles for simon gratz a guy who's got to get in the flow offensively has no points right now stokes and thompson four each for the bulldogs strawberry mansion back on the offense they have the ball in an eight point lead gregory cunningham over to levi lamar ball goes out of bounds we've got a call right here it's going to retain by strawberry mansion Lamar gets the ball back into Gregory Cunningham. Coming up on the three-minute mark in the first half of the Public League Boys Championship. Out top to Maurice Rice. Over to Omar Thomas. Back outside to Rice. Very, very deliberate mansion offense right now. They've got the lead, and they're playing very, very effectively. Swing the ball inside as Thomas comes over onto the right side of the court. Stepped out of bounds, and Simon Gratz will get the ball and try to cut into an eight-point deficit. And that's unusual for Omar because at that point, he was trying to make an additional move. He wanted to get his body into the defensive player and then play off the body, but the ball hit off of his leg. Terrence Stokes up near half court and try to bring it across himself. He does, but again, there's Strawberry Mansion help. Not just one defender, but two. Fatty Cunningham over to Lamar. Big scramble. Omar Thomas is in the middle of it, as are Terrence Stokes and Purcell Coles. We're going to jump it up at the possession arrow right now goes to Strawberry Mansion, so they retain possession. Notice how many Gratz, play, Gratz players were on the floor. Two players because they know that in order for them to be in the game, to win the game, they've got to come up with the loose ball, they've got to come up with the turnovers, and defense has to do it for them. Omar Thomas inside. A lot of defensive help. Nothing happened with that shot right there, and Simon Gratz will bring the ball up and try to score at their end down by eight. Purcell Coles has been shut out so far. Gets the ball over. Back outside, Coles. And we have a three-second violation, a rare call in high school, college, or pro basketball these days. Brandon Millwood, number 33, now in the game for Gratz. Well, they never could get into sync. Gratz was past the ball between three players, never settle into what they were doing, and that's when the three seconds occurs because you're not mentally aware that you're in the lane. 
Cunningham as we now have Johnny Mack into the game for the Knights of Strawberry Mansion. Over on the white wing to Omar Thomas, back out top to Johnny Mack. Johnny Mack, another senior, so this is a Strawberry Mansion team that's been working for a couple of years to get right where they are into a title game with a good chance to win it. They have an eight-point lead as Fatty Cunningham is going to take over the offense and run it from out top. Omar Thomas, good, good look inside on that play to Frank Griffin. Before the shot, though, we have a foul whistle. It's going to send Frank Tom, uh, Frank Griffin here to the foul line. 1.58 to go in your first half as Simon Gratz going back onto the bench once again. And what Coach Ellaby is now doing is he's looking for the right combination. He just can't find the right group that will do what he wants defensively and offensively. So therefore, he's subbing a lot more in this ball game than he has in the previous games that has helped Gratz to get to the championship. Coming up tonight on Fox, it's an all-new Malcolm the Middle. Can the school picnic survive Malcolm's family? Don't miss the showdown in the playground on Malcolm in the Middle tonight at 8.30 on Fox Philadelphia. The lead remains at 8 as Simon Gratz brings the ball up court, trying to get closer than 8 right now. Brandon Millwood all over the floor with that basketball. They're going to call it a jump ball situation. The possession arrow this time stays with Simon Gratz. And when you get a sub that comes in like Millwood, he can't come into the ball game and think that he can make plays. He's got to play within the system, and then out of the system, a play will develop. Sean McKee trying to get something started. Gets the ball inside. Millwood, number 50 right there, Afima McFadden, and it's a 23-17 advantage. So Gratz battling back in the ball game. Well, see, that's what, the that's, that's, that's yeah. the play I'm talking about. You get in the ball game, you let something happen, and in turn, that'll work for you. Look at Maurice Rice, the freshman. This kid is going to be a great public league player. Some are saying he could be one of the best D1 prospects in the next couple of years in the public league. Well, he's been out there playing for a long time, and even when he was younger, the word was out that he was an exceptional player. And we're going to have a push foul called right here. So Simon Gratz playing very, very aggressively at the defensive end as they have cut the lead down to six. And they end up getting the foul call right here. And if that's on Thomas, it would be number four. That is only his second personal foul. We had a correction on that. They had given us information earlier that it was he in the third situation. And now that would have been four instead. That is only his second foul. But Sean McKee is going to go to the line with a chance, Sonny, to get this lead down to four. And it's critical because when your team is trailing like Gratz and you want to get back in the ball game, the foul shooting becomes even more important. Sean McKee does not convert there. Battle for the rebound. And the ball is going to stay with Gratz. As we have a minute 13 to go in the first half. Gratz gotten the lead down to six right now. Sean McKee will inbound under his own basket. Gratz comes up with the offensive rebound by being aggressive. And uh, now they have an opportunity to score. And Sean McKee is going to be very deliberate. Bill Ellerby's basketball team is not going to push the panic button. We know that. Matthew Rice now in the game, so a number of substitutes. Doesn't go, but Gratz is going to retain as we go under one minute the ball. Terrence Stokes, strong move for the hoop, and he draws the foul. So again, they're doing the things they know how to do best, play physically at both ends. It's ugly. But it's effective. But that's the way they like to play, and we're going to see some of that ugliness right here. Strong offensive rebound allows Stokes to be able to get the ball, and when you're not shooting well outside, you go looking for the defense and making them foul. And that's what he did that time. He went looking for the defense, paused in the foul, but you got to make the foul shots. And that has been a problem for Grant so far this afternoon as they've had a number of chances at the foul line to cut into the mansion lead, and we have not seen them do it as effectively as they would like to do. Second shot with 52 and a half seconds to go in the first half for Terrence Stokes. And the lead remains in six. So Strawberry Mansion with the ball and a six-point lead. And they're going to bring it down very, very deliberately. Gregory Cunningham with the ball. See, the LB taking McKee out and having him sit right next to him because he wants to now calm him down and impart to him the importance for him to understand what the philosophy is from the coach to him being the coach on the floor as the leader of the team. Now we talk so much about how Strawberry Mansion likes to run and gun, but right here, they know they have a lead. It's under 30 seconds in the first half, so they're going to hold it out for the last shot, something they did very effectively at the end of the first quarter. Well, from, from Strawberry Mansion's point of view, they're happy to walk off the floor with a six-point lead or more. 
from Gratz's point of view, if they can hold them and only walk off being six down and not shooting the ball at all as well as they have, then that's good. Maurice Rice tried to get the ball up, and McFadden with the nice block right there. And it ends up in a good situation for Simon Gratz as they draw the foul here with four seconds left in the half. That's the thing that you have to look at. When you're playing as well as Strawberry Mansion has played, you want to widen the distance in scoring. Gratz, on the other hand, has not played well, but they've stayed within striking. That's why it's important to stay within the coach's philosophy. That's why Coach Ellerby took Sean McKee out and sat him down next to him in the John Cheney seat that he likes to keep open and say to him, hey, just keep buying into my system. Don't panic. And McFadden misses the first of the free throws. You saw that great shot there, though, of Gerald Hendricks talking to the outstanding freshman Maurice Rice there, talking to him during the free throw situation. So you have two veteran coaches who are going to use every opportunity to tutor their young men, especially a freshman like Maurice Rice. McFadden gets one and two, so with four seconds to go, the lead is down to five. Full court pressure from Gratz. Omar Thomas just gets into the forecourt. And they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. So Simon Gratz will have the ball with three seconds to go. If they can somehow hit a three here, they can cut it to a two-point game going into the locker room. Any score that they get would be devastating to Strawberry Mansion because they have control of the game throughout most of the first half. McFadden goes strong to the hoop. Traveled. But he traveled before he had the opportunity to get the shot off. And so three-tenths of one second remaining in our first half. Too emotional. Rather than recognize there was three seconds to pull up for a long jumper. Omar Thomas from long range. He does not get it, but his team, Strawberry Mansion, has a 23 to 18 lead. As Mansion, the Knights have done an excellent job so far. They've done the things they had to do. Bill Ellerby leading his team off. And Gerald Hendricks, the great coach of Strawberry Mansion. You know, when you're a high school coach, you have to do a number of things. So right now, he's helping pick up the warm-ups over there. And now he's going to be joining Sarah Caldwell to talk about an outstanding effort so far by his Mansion Knights. Sarah? That's right. It has been a very strong half for your Knights. What's most important coming into the second half? Um, we can't commit any more turnovers. Right now, we've committed too many, and that's why we're allowing Grants to stay in the game. We have to be able to keep the ball and just don't commit the turnovers. Do you think you guys have dictated the tempo? We're trying to, yes. We are trying to dictate the tempo. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Halftime activities will continue after this. Much more to come. Stay with us. Gratz's game plan stay with Strawberry Mansion's game plan. Same starting five for both teams, and what a job Bill Ellerby has done at Simon Gratz over the years. Second half, though, is Strawberry Mansion with a five-point lead, trying to win a first public league championship for Gerald Hendricks. They had an excellent ball movement first half, and they're going to try to keep it up right here in the second half. Long outside shot from Fatty Cunningham does not go. Brandon Thompson got the rebound, but he traveled, so Mansion will get it right back. Well, one thing uh, that Gratz is able to do is control its own defensive board. The thing that Strawberry Mansion is able to do is to get some wonderful looks against the matchup zone defense and uh, they've been able to make a good percentage of their shots. There's Omar Thomas who had seven in the first half. The ball outside to Maurice Rice. Strong move by the freshman up and good 25 to 18. The Mansion lead. Sean McKee, the veteran, going to run the Gratz offense up against Mansion pressure. Got the ball right over to Tony Abrams and they move it into the four court and the ball goes out of bounds. Gratz will retain possession. Once again, Sean McKee is the key in running a Bill Ellerby offense here, Sonny. Maurice Rice, dribble penetration against the zone found a soft spot, and he pulled up. Most players would over-dribble and not be in control to take that shot. Jump shot by Terrence Stokes does not go, and a nice, strong rebound right there by Manchin as they come into the fourth court. Maurice Rice gets the ball back outside to number 22, Daryl Jones. Jones will pull up, and he hits it. So right like that, 27 to 18, a nine-point Manchin lead. Dribble penetration, ball penetration. Give and go that time against the zone. Rice got it, gave it back to Jones, field goal. Brandon Thompson cannot get the ball to go, and Daryl Jones with another strong rebound, and so far, Manchin out very impressively to start the second half. Here's their star, Omar Thomas, has seven points already. Strong to the hoop. Might have gone anyway, but it's not going to count, but he was fouled and will go to the line to try to extend the lead for Manchin to double digits. Now, see, Omar is able to do that because the floor has been spread because of the offensive play of the other players. Notice how he's able to go into the defense. Nice spin. 
once he recognizes that contact is coming, he positions himself to get fouled, and now he's at the foul line. Daryl Jones with a good hustle there, but of course it doesn't count, so Omar Thomas will get two from the line, and the foul shooting woes continue for both teams. It's a shame that modern basketball players cannot shoot fouls simply because they don't practice that aspect of the game. When they go to practice, they practice everything they see when you have it on Fox TV on Sundays, the sports show, all of the highlights, dunking. You, dunking, Don, you put we, it on there. We will take responsibility for the poor free throw shooting because they've watched me shoot, Sonny. That's where the problem comes oh. from. All right. Tell your producer to put something else on. You got it. All right. Outside to Sean McKee. Post up the three. Doesn't get it. And once again, good rebounding by Manchin. Daryl Jones all the way down with the big slam. And just like that, it is a 12-point Knights advantage. Here comes Gratz. They got to try to do something at the offensive end. They have not started well in the second half. And a turnover right there. And here comes Maurice Rice, the freshman. Nice move to the hoop, but he doesn't get it to go. And Gratz comes right back the other way. Sean McKee gets the ball over to Purcell Cole. Still trying to score his first points of the game. And he's got two right there to cut it back to a 10-point lead. But Manchin would like to get this into a run-and-gun situation. That's their strength. And they've come out and done that effectively to get a double-digit lead. Well, what they don't want to do is to allow the floor to be open like the last last time so Purcell Coles can penetrate and get a layup they definitely don't want to have that Cunningham out top looking inside takes it inside himself swings the ball out to Daryl Jones swings it to Omar Thomas air ball but the rebound goes to the freshman Maurice Rice and he is so strong for a freshman we've talked about this is a guy who has worked so hard to develop himself both physically and mentally as a total basketball player but speaking of a total basketball player how about Daryl Jones going to the hoop well this is a very strong move by Daryl he goes in he shows him the ball he's gonna lay it up but in his mind he knows he's gonna elevate for the dunk Maurice Rice at the line trying to make it a 12-point lead if he can convert two. And he nails the free throw, so maybe the free throw shooting will turn around here with Maurice Rice, the freshman at the line, as Bill Ellerby, Simon Gratz team going right away to the bench as they've got to try to change the tempo, getting Michael Blackshear back in. And Blackshear is in now because they need some more inside play, and Ellerby is over there right now trying to make sure he can console his players because he needs them to understand they can't play emotionally. They've got to play intelligently. And if they play emotionally, that's what Strober and Manchin will be able to feed off. And we've seen them do that at the start of the second half of the ball game. Bill Eller will be watching his team trail by 11 right now. 5.33 to go in the third quarter. Simon Gratz again will have to bring the ball up against pressure as the Manchin defense has been good both in the backcourt and the forecourt. Sean McKee gets the ball in. He's going to try to bring it up himself. He's working the ball over onto the left side to Purcell Coles. Purcell Coles really wants to get on track offensively. Michael Blackshear out to Sean McKee, and they will set the offense for the Bulldogs. Terrence Stokes back out to McKee. They get the good look inside. It's still not falling for Coles. Blackshear battling, battling hard, and he does an outstanding job on the offensive rebounding end, and he ends up causing the ball to go out off Omar Thomas. I don't think Gratz has made a shot in this ball game beyond 13 feet, and they continue not to be able to shoot the ball from outside. Michael Blackshear was pushed to the ground by Daryl Jones right there. So Simon Gratz again trying to go back inside. As Bill Ellerby knows, his guys are not hitting from outside. And he's going to try to score some of those points physically with a big sophomore in Michael Blackshear well, Jr. They've got to get it done from uh, the offensive rebounding. They've got to get it done from inside play. And all finally, right. there it is. Purcell Coles gets the outside shot they needed. And all of a sudden, perhaps the shooting route has ended for Simon Gratz. It's a 31-22 game. Now, sometimes when you score like that, it energizes your defense. We'll see if that happens. Fatty Cunningham as a long outside shot by Daryl Jones does not go. Boy, Michael Blackshear with an outstanding rebound. Gets the outlet pass to Sean McKee. And here come the Bulldogs of Simon Gratz. But good hustle at the other end by Daryl Jones. Simon Gratz will retain possession, trailing 31-22, 4.49 to go in the third quarter of our title game. Now, if I'm coaching Strawberry Mansion, I want to make sure that I keep the flow of the game, the rhythm of the game going in my direction. So right now, that's one of the things that you want to pay attention to. Strawberry Mansion in charge of the ball game. Gratz trying to make a run. And a nice pass from Coles, who just hit the three-pointer. Blackshear misses, battles hard, gets his own rebound. He's fouled, and he's going to go to the line. And he missed that. He missed the layup because he didn't play a lot in the first half of the ball game. Now we're going to see it on the replay. He gets a good shot, but he shoots it with a lot of oomph. 
and a lot of oomph is because he's emotionally still from not being able to unwind. Remember, Coach Ellerby took him out in the first half of the ball game, and he really didn't play a lot of minutes. Can the free throw shooting improve for Gratz? It does on that there as the lead is down to eight now. 31-23, Manchin is up. Michael Blackshear has made a nice, nice presence coming off the bench to help the Bulldogs and try to hit the second free throw here and cut the advantage to seven. And he does so. And now Simon Gratz will try to get a defensive stop. Manchin will try to start turning up the offense once again as Levi Lamar has moved back into the ball game. He's coming up court with Fatty Cunningham. Lamar has the ball. Swings the ball over to the freshman Maurice Rice. And a nice defensive effort by Sean McKee. He hits the ball off of Levi Lamar. What a play. That's the thing Aaron McKee, his uncle, has done in the college ranks and the pros. Let me take you back to what I say. When Gratz begins to score, it energizes their defense. And we've seen their defense step up to another level where their defense early in this second half in the third quarter was very porous because they were not able to score. Levi Lamar right out of the game. Johnny Mack is in. And Simon Gratz has the basketball down by seven midway through the third period. They get the ball moving around very nicely. Sean McKee sees nothing inside, brings it back outside. They swing it around. Purcell calls for a three. In and out. Michael Blackster battling hard. He causes that offensive rebound that goes to Purcell Coles, but a traveling violation and Strawberry Mansion dodged the basketball bullet right there. Why is LB up? He's so calm and so serene in terms of what he does. Now he's up because he realizes that the referee called a walk, and I'm not too sure whether it was a walk or not, but uh, sometimes you have to be a little emotional, and Coach Ellaby was a little emotional on that play. And here's a look at the replay. Look at Michael Blackshear go to the offensive boards. Strong, determined, Knocks it loose. Look at Coach. Yes, he did. He moved two baby steps before he got there. And but let's see if we see Coach Ellaby all the way. I want to see Coach Ellaby. I want to see him get up. I want to see him be emotional. Oh, he didn't, he didn't show that. <laughs> and as usual, when we go, there's the very there stoic is. Bill Ellaby. There he is. Nice and calm. Absolutely. But you when, better inside. Boy, that motor is running, man. <laughs> you got it. And when we go to those replays, though, we usually show the officials, in this case, Mike Chesney, Jeff Hill, and Carl Garlitos doing an excellent job in this public league title game. All right. Strawberry Mansion with the ball on a seven point lead. They're going to try to increase it. Johnny Mack just into the game. Nothing but air on that shot. Omar Thomas with the offensive board and he is fouled on a go to the line. And if somebody can start making the free throws, they can just flat out win this championship game. Well, remember, Strawberry Mansion has not had an opportunity to get that many chances at the foul line there. Here they are. And their best player, Omar Thomas, is at the line. So let's see if they can do just what we talked about, begin to make some foul shots. Omar Thomas shooting two here. The lead is at seven, and it stays at seven, come so the on. problem continues. They don't work on it. You got to go to the gym and shoot two and three and four hundred per day, every day. And as we look at Gerald Hendricks, and for those of us who are all 30-something, we remember those days where if you didn't shoot 20 or 30 or 40 at the end of practice, they made you stay there until you did. And that was the way they did it in the old school. And, uh, and we still are old school guys, but these are great young men, and some of them go on. You see this in the college ranks all the time to turn it around and become great free throw shooters when you work out. I'm not too sure that even in the pro level they can't even shoot fouls because they all watch... TV. They watch, <laughs> no, they watch too many TV highlights. If they watch the entire game, they see the importance of free Look throw. at that guy. He's dunking the ball, and he's Jason Williams, and he's doing all these. How about some fundamentals? How about practice your fouls and your bounce pass? And here's Bill Ellerby in reasonable dialogue with the officials today as he's discussing the situation. Omar Thomas at the game. Story set at 31-24 in Manchin's favor right now. Omar Thomas will be shooting the second of his two free throws as Gratz has really started to do some good things down at their end, but Strawberry Mansion knows that if they can start making some foul shots, they've gotten to the line, they can really extend this lead that's currently at seven. All right, Omar Thomas with 3.51 to go in the third period, back on the foul line, ready to shoot. All and right. he makes it, so the lead is now at eight. Strawberry Mansion, 32. Simon Gratz, 24. 351 to go in the third period at the beautiful Leah Chorus Center. Don and Sonny. You got it, Sarah. He certainly exhibits poise and great offensive rebounding skills in particular. All right, Gratz bringing the ball up against pressure. They're down by eight midway through the third period. They almost lose it, but Sean McKee gets it back for Gratz. Let me go back to that interview for those who just tune in. Michael Blackshear Jr. is just in the 10th grade. He was a major player 
to a large degree in the ninth grade. He's a major player this year. He will carry the Gratz program over the next two years. So sometimes we put too much pressure on our young people just because they are exceptionally talented. And you talk about great on-court coaching. Look at the way Sean McKee is running the offense with Terrence Stokes right now. Good inside pass to Purcell Coles, and that's exactly the look they want now that Coles is hitting the shots. And again, if I'm Strawberry Mansion, even though they have been the dominant team in this game, the Gratz is still able to hang around. 32, 26, three minutes to go in the third quarter. Johnny Mack with the ball, and he traveled, and just like that, another turnover gives Gratz a chance now to cut into a six-point lead, but they have really picked it up at the defensive end, and they're looking to trap when they can and doing some good things defensively. There's Michael Blackshear, Jr., the sophomore you were talking about, Sonny, and he could be a key down the stretch even today as a young player. How about the coach that Coach Hendricks talked about turnovers? Nice, beautiful pass from Blackshear. Nice inside pass. What a pass to Brandon Millwood from Michael Blackshear Jr. And the lead is down to four. And Blackshear really, really picking up his game right now. All right, Strawberry Mansion, as we come up on the two and a half minute mark in the third period, their lead is down to four. And they're going to try to do something at the offensive end. Fatty Cunningham out on top. Great Gratz defensive pressure. Swings it over to Johnny Mack. Back outside to Fatty Cunningham. Gets it over to the freshman Maurice Rice. But look at the Gratz defensive pressure right now. Gratz now is energized because they're scoring. And the thing that you have to be concerned about if you're playing against Gratz is they're beginning to impose their will on the game. Gratz is a lot better as the game goes on. The more minutes, the better they're able to impose their time. It's that time of the game with two minutes to go in the third and then into the fourth quarter when they could possibly impose their will even more. All right. Doesn't get the basket, but he will go back to the foul line. And if again he can start hitting the foul shots, it's a very good sign for Strawberry Mansion now with their lead down to four. Two minutes, 12 seconds to go in the third period. And look at this move to the hoop by Omar Thomas. Omar is special because he's quick and he knows what he's doing and he's decisive. And that's what he was able to do with that period. He made a quick decision, attacked the basket. Now he's going to get two foul shots. We have a 30-second timeout right now before Omar Thomas shoots those foul shots. And one of the things that we talk about so constantly when we talk about public league basketball is the good work these young men do as student athletes. And as we get ready for Omar Thomas to shoot from free throws, here is a guy who, along with Daryl Jones and some of the other Knights, loves the fact that they can go mentor at Strawberry Mansion Middle School. They talk to youngsters not only about basketball and academics, but about life skills. And that's typical of so many of the public league student athletes we're so proud of. Well, they're role models in a school that has not only a senior, but a middle school. So they really have the young youngsters look like Rice, Maurice Rice. He looked up to these guys because eventually he wanted to get to the high, Strawberry Mansion high. Absolutely. And there's Bill Ellerby who's done a great job with his student athletes at Simon Gratz's. They too are not just involved in the basketball program or the classroom. They too are involved in the community. And the foul shooting woes continue for Omar Thomas as they continue for both Mansion and Gratz. Foul shooting and turnovers could be something that Strawberry Mansion can look back on and say that made a difference in the ball game. All right, Thomas gets one and two and is now a five-point advantage for Strawberry Mansion. Michael Blackshear gets the ball over to Marcel Coles. Back to Blackshear. They play catch, and what a move by Mama Blackshear Jr. And what a ball-handling move he made starting that play in the fourth court. Well, the play is Michael Blackshear breaking the pressure. We don't see that. The good pass from Coles to Michael Blackshear, and then quickly with a great catch. See, people don't understand that in order to be an outstanding basketball player, you have to have good hands. Michael Blackshear continues the free throw shooting epidemic that we've seen at both ends of the court. So it's a 33 to 30 man should lead as they get the ball to the fourth court. Maurice Wright swings it over to Johnny Mack. Inside they go and they get the ball to Daryl Jones. He's fouled by Sean McKee. Michael Blackshear, though, is just putting on a show because you've talked about it so much, Sonny. Here is a guy who has the great bloodlines with his dad, who we saw in the interview with Sarah Caldwell, but he is a guy who does so many of the little things, like you mentioned in that last sequence. Yes, he finished the play, but in large part, he had started the play coming over the half-court line with his ball handling. But his dad also played in the golden era of high school basketball because he played uh, against Gene Banks when Gene was younger, and he helped to tutor a guy like Gene Banks because he's from West Philadelphia, Overbrook High School, and Gene Banks went to West Philadelphia High School. So there is a connection 
all the way long with what's going on with Michael Blackshear and Michael Blackshear Jr. All right, Michael Blackshear Jr. on defense right now against Manson as they're being very patient. Maurice Rice, the freshman, pump fake up. Omar Thomas with the offensive rebound. Again, they get another offensive board from Frank Griffin, and he puts it in to get the lead back up to five. Now, that's a few times that we've seen the offensive rebounding that way for Strawberry Manson, but they needed that basket, and they were able to get it. And Sean McKee with a very unusual miscue. So as we come up on the one-minute mark here of the third quarter, Manchin will have the ball with a five-point lead. And right now, McFadden, who had a nice couple of minutes in the first half, he is back in the game for Gratz. So Gratz going deeper and deeper on their bench right now, Sonny. Well, they are showing some depth, but they're showing it because they need different looks and they're looking for different combinations. Strawberry Mansion Knights have a five-point lead, and they get the ball inside Omar Thomas. You can name it as a seven-point lead right now. As we come under the one-minute mark, Rats will bring the ball up and try to get that lead down as we wrap up the third quarter. Purcell Coles in the fourth quarter. Gets the ball back out in your half court to Sean McKee. He's the guy who runs his offense. He will set it up, and he's looking for a good offensive option. There are always a couple of them when you're talking about Gratz basketball. Purcell Coles off the pass from Terrence Stokes. He'll go to the foul line. So with 35.9 seconds to go, Mansion with a seven point lead grass can cut it to five but they got to make free throws sonny but as we look here good ball movement by simon grass getting the ball over to coles well the thing about simon grass is that coles has a green light to shoot the ball whenever and uh, even though the clock was running down Gratz felt that they wanted to get an offensive play off let their defense react accordingly he's at the foul line knocks down the first one if he makes the second one, Sonny Hill might be ready to give him the player of the game award because I've been watching you shaking your head, partner, when they're missing the free throws. Oh, it's sad. Oh! Purcell calls down, so right. he wins the Sunny Hill player of the game award regardless of the outcome, and the lead is down to five. Strawberry Manson's going to try to extend in the last half minute of third quarter basketball here at the Leah Chorus Center. They get the ball into the fourth court. Frank Griffin throws it away. Michael Blackshear with the save, though. And Simon Gratz is going to have the ball with 26 and a half seconds to cut into the five-point lead. And that's what we talked about. Gratz relying on his defense. Took a quick shot with 40-some seconds to go. Able to get a turnover at this end. Puts them back in the ball game. Michael Blackshear brings the ball over center court. Gets the ball over to Purcell Coles. He sets for the three. Doesn't get it. Blackshear can't yes, get the sir. rebound. Here comes Fatty Cunningham bringing up Scarberry Mansion. 15 seconds to go oh. in the half. He throws it away. Too tall for Maurice Rice. And Gratz will get another chance with 12 and a half seconds. Too, too emotional on both ends. Coles can get a shot anytime he wants, so why take a quick one? And why was Strawberry Manson in a hurry when they're ahead in the ball game? Blackshear going to take it all the way himself successfully, and the lead is down to three. We're going to finish the third quarter with Strawberry Manson up, but they're only up three, and clearly momentum has now turned in the favor of the Bulldogs of Simon Gratz. We'll be back with the fourth and pivotal quarter of the Public League Championship game. Lock and wins a Public League title. I think right now it's a balance because we've seen an ebb and flow. We've seen Manchin come out early in the ball game, have the game the way they want up and down. We've seen Gratz with Coach Ellerby be able to come back and impose its will late in the ball game. I think in the fourth quarter, it now becomes a game of, do you want it? Are you willing to do the little things to make sure that you can be the public league champion. All right, Gratz with the ball down three as we start the fourth quarter. Purcell calls pressure from Maurice Rice. Swings the ball back out to Sean McKee, and he is fouled on the play by Daryl Jones. So again, Gratz is going to have opportunities at the foul line. They have gotten up to the 50% mark. They're 10 of 20. Manchin, though, still under 50 at 5 of 12. And foul shots in a game that this close are going to be so important as we look at the foul again. Good hustle by Daryl Jones, but there was plenty of contact. Well, one of the things that Gratz has to do now is to make foul shots because they're going to get a chance now to go to the foul line and one of the things that strawberry mansion has to do is to understand that it has to play with a lot more intelligence in terms of what's going on another thing they'll have to do is play without daryl jones that was his fifth foul by Lamar is back in the game for the Knights of Strawberry Mansion. Sean McKee out high trying to run that offense as he has his team in a position with a three to tie the ball game right now. He's got Michael Blackshear and Purcell Coles, a couple of outstanding offensive options. McKee gets the ball over. Terrence Stokes. Stokes back to McKee and McKee's going to bring it back on top. No shot clock once again if you're just joining us in Public League Boys Basketball. So Gratz can afford to be deliberate and they're very good at being deliberate. And this is also a very important set for both of these ball clubs. A score by Gratz 
energizes their defense. And if they don't score, it really helps Strawberry Mansion. Great, great look there from Stokes inside the calls. It didn't go. Michael Blackshear, though, working on the rebound. He does a job again, and the foul call is going to go against Strawberry Mansion. So Gratz using their physical ability inside as we look at the replay to make good things happen even when they don't get the bucket. Well, we're going to see the physical style that we talked about. Black Blackshear keeping it alive to allow Gratz to be in a position where they can be fouled and control the ball. And this is how you impose your will on the other team because that's Gratz style. And if they can be successful, they can continue to thrive off of it. All right, Sean McKee takes the ball from Terrence Stokes. And again, Gratz will reset the offense as they look for the options. They have Blackshear as one of the options inside. They have McFadden, another big option inside. And then, of course, with your outside shooting, you got Coles, who has picked it up, as well as Stokes. But Sean McKee operates the offense, gets the ball to Stokes. In the corner over to Coles. Back out time for McKee. They're going to be very, very patient. Again, what sunny has been talking about. Right now, Sean McKee is going to be extremely patient as he resets the set right here, and the offense is looking for a nice, nice open look. They get the ball to Purcell Coles. He swings it over to Terrence Stokes. Stokes back outside to Coles. Coles inside to Michael Blackshear. Back out to Sean McKee for the three. Does not go. And Omar Thomas with a big rebound for Strawberry Mansion as they'll bring the ball up. Fatty Cunningham has the ball and a three-point lead as we come up on the six minute mark in the fourth period and the key to that was patience but a wrong shot selection by sean mckee didn't need the long shot lamar has the ball outside he's going to take it inside a little bit more swings the ball over to frank griffin they go way back outside to maurice rice rats with the good defensive pressure coming way out to pressure the basketball right now now it's reversal strawberry mansion with a three-point lead they know how crucial this set is and they can't afford to turn it over and they do and that could be a very costly turnover as we go under the six-minute mark, 544 to be exact. Right now, Simon Gratz will again have the ball with an opportunity to tie this basketball game if they can come up with a three. And they've gone even deeper on the bench as junior guard Messiah Reams is now running the offense for the Simon Gratz Bulldogs. And Bill Ellerby in a very animated discussion right now with Sean McKee on the bench, Sonny. And that John Cheney seat next to him. And he is <laughs> using it to the fullest. He can shout his best, and he's right next to him, but he has let him know how he feels right now and the strawberry mansion dodges another offensive bullet right here they'll get the ball back protecting the 37 to 34 lead and there's bill ellerby in that exasperated john shady style of his mentor and sean mckee looking up at the clock and going i want to get back in the ball game and and it worked he got the nod no no but coach knows ellerby knows he needs sean but he needs sean to be balanced he needs sean to be cool he needs sean to think and not be forced into a situation where he's doing something that is out of character for the team and out of character of what he can do as a basketball player. Omar Thomas back to the line against Strawberry Mansion. Only 5 of 12 from the foul line so far this afternoon. Making 6 of 13 as Omar Thomas extends the lead to 4. But one of the great things about Bill Ellerby is that few guys, except for perhaps a John Chaney, do as good a job as that little 15 to 30 second conference. At a key point in the game, he will take a guy out and do what he just did with Sean McKee. Yeah, but that doesn't start in the ball game. That starts from day one when you come into the program. Understand, this is my program. Understand, this is how we win. You either buy into it or you won't be around. Omar Thomas made the second free throw to get the lead to five, but there's going to be a foul, and Sean McKee was bringing the ball up court. He was fouled on the play by Levi Lamar, and Strawberry Mansion has a five-point lead, but Gratz looking right now to find that combination at the offensive end that can get them in a position to pull even closer than five. Sean McKee will go to the line. 519 right now and the bonus situation exists so as Sonny has been saying it's going to be a foul shooting contest down the stretch Omar Thomas did the job getting his 12th and 13th point of the afternoon at the other end how about Sean McKee he misses so Simon Grath back under 50 percent at the foul line and Manchin has the ball at a five-point lead coming up on five minutes to go in the game and see a coach can't do anything about that I can get you good shots I can get you to the foul line but you've got to execute Shooting is something that the individual has to do. Maurice Rice way outside right now as Sean McKee is coming all over the basketball court as the defensive pressure is picking up for Gratz. Turnover is reduced by the pressure right there. And of course, and then here comes the Simon Gratz Bulldog offensive attack. Purcell Cole is going to go strong to the hoop. He ends up getting fouled on the play by Frank Griffin. But again, a turnover produced by the excellent defensive pressure of Simon Gratz. We're going to see some great defense Oh, no, we're going to see great offense in terms of the defense getting the ball. And notice Coles, when he gets the ball, he's already made up his mind that he's going to attack the basket. 
Why? Because Gratz is not shooting the ball well from outside, Coles in particular, and they're still missing foul shots. And Bill Ellerby just gives a sigh that you can hear audibly all the way across the court. You know the old saying, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can take guys and put them in the gym and make them shoot foul shots, but if they're not willing to do it outside of that structure, meaning when they get up every day, that's got to be a part of your lifestyle. How to improve your game, and foul shooting is one of them. Boris Rice with the basketball. Manson has a four-point lead right now. They get over to Levi Lamar. He swings it back outside to Fatty Cunningham. Back to Rice. Cunningham and Rice playing catch out top. Over to the corner. Lamar gets the ball inside to Griffin. Strong move for the hoop, and the Manson lead is at six. And they go right to the defensive pressure as we come up on the halfway point of the fourth period here at the Leah Chorus Center. Gratz breaks the pressure. Terrence Stokes gets the ball over to Sean McKee. Outside to Purcell calls. He hits a three, and just like that, a six-point advantage is a three-point advantage. If you keep shooting it, somewhere along the line, some of them have to go. Second three-point shot, outside shot for Coles. Strawberry Mansion protecting that three-point lead. Fatty Cunningham loses control of it, but Levi Lamar picks the ball up. They swing the ball back outside to Maurice Wright. We are under the four-minute mark in this basketball game. Maurice Wright, the freshman, all the way to the hoop. Cannot finish. Michael Blackshear hustling, but good hustle by Omar Thomas as well. And because of Thomas's hustle, the ball will be in Strawberry Mansion's hands with 3.48 to go in the fourth period when we come back to the Public League Championship game at the Leah Chorus Center. We got a beauty. It's going to be a heck of a finish. To me, we work together. Ike Richmond, you did a great job because Wilt would have loved to have had a part of this uh, be a part of his life if he was still with us. His Globetrotters uniform retired so proudly at Overbrook. His Strawberry Mansion now tries to take it in the Overbrook tradition and get a win in the Public League title game right now. They're out top. Fatty Cunningham, three-point lead right now for Maurice Rice and the Knights. They swing the ball over to their star, Omar Thomas. Great spin move, but he gets double team underneath, and he stepped on the end line, and they're going to call a foul. He was pushed out on that, so once again, Omar Thomas is going to have an opportunity to score some key points at the foul line. With a three Three point difference. Mansion 41, Gratz 38, 330 to go in the fourth quarter. Couple keys. Foul shooting, turnovers, the team that really hustles, and then most important, the will to win. That's where the game is right now. Omar Thomas trying to show that will to win at the foul line. Gets the first one. And as we look at the replay here, strong spin move to start it. And then he ends up getting double teamed underneath, but he draws the foul. Well, that's because the defensive man was lazy. If he took one more step, he had the out-of-bounds line as a defensive player, and he didn't have to slide anymore. Omar Thomas coming up big when it counts the most. He hits two foul shots, and it is a five-point advantage for Strawberry Mansion. Karen Stokes into the forecourt, and they'll try to set up offensively. Michael Blackshear at the high post gets the ball back outside to Sean McKee. Down five, 320 to go, but they're still going to be very patient, as they always are in the Gratz Bulldogs program. Sean McKee running the offense. He has options like Purcell Coles to look for right now. Where's he going to go with this basketball at a key? time. Gets it to Michael Blackshear Jr. Not good. Blackshear with his own rebound battling for the board. Maurice Rice is battling in there. Two great 21s. One of them a freshman, one of them a sophomore. You'll see them dominate the public league in many categories in the next couple of years. But right now, under three minutes, Strawberry Mansion trying to get a key view. Maurice Rice all the way to the hoop. And what are they going to call? They're going to call offensive or they're going to call the blocking foul here. They're going to get the call that goes in Strawberry Mansion's favor and that is a key, key moment in the foul call right here coming in Manson's favor, Sonny. Well, we have two young players. We had Michael Blackshear at the other end make a play. Didn't work. This time, Maurice Rice makes a strong drive to the basket, and he was able to pick up the foul, and now we're at that crucial stage again. Can you make foul shots? And much like Sean McKee, as he makes the first one, has done for the Gratz team, Fatty Cunningham, the guy who runs this team for Strawberry Mansion as the point guard much of the time, although he can also play the wing. He's out talking to his teammates about the situation. The situation is a seven-point lead for the Knights of Strawberry Mansion, trying to win a first public league championship for Gerald Hendricks against the longtime powerhouse Simon Graff. But Sean McKee and the Bulldogs will battle down to the end. Purcell Coles, long three in and out but a nice nice rebound by number 33 brandon millwood and he's going to go to the foul line with 235 to go in what is potentially the first public league championships for the strawberry mansion knights that time gratz was very fortunate the shot that purcell coles took 
was well out of his range. It was too quick. 235 to go in the ball game. Gratz is trailing Mansion 45-38. There's enough time to probe the defense, get a decent shot. They were bailed out with a strong offensive rebound, which is the thing that has kept Gratz in the ball game. But they also have to make foul shots. A very vocal Strawberry Mansion crowd right now being urged on by their Knights mascot. And right now they are looking at ways to stay in this basketball game with the advantage of seven. Brandon Millwood looking for ways to get Gratz back in it, but the junior cannot hit the first of two foul shots to cut into the margin. Well, foul shooting is what we've talked about throughout the ball game. And the foul shooting when Gratz looks at it, when it's all over, will be something that will come back to haunt them. The lead is down to six. We saw a great shot of Frank Griffin on the sidelines. He will not be contributing at the end here for Mansion. Has done a nice job earlier. We're coming up on two and a half minutes and Fatty Cunningham bringing the basketball up for the Strawberry Mansion Knights. They have the ball and a six-point lead. He swings it out to Levi Lamar. Back over to Cunningham. Cunningham gets it to Omar Thomas. Good look, does not get it to go, but what a great offensive rebound, and they get two of them. Omar Thomas converts. No test, Savage did not, but it wasn't a matter because Omar Thomas got the job done to get the lead to 47 to 39. Simon Gratz will retain possession. They're down eight with only 2.08 to go in the ball game. And Omar Thomas was able to get that rebound, and we see Coach Ellaby showing his real concern at this point with 2.08 to go. 39-47, Mansion in the lead, but Omar was quick to the rebound. Purcell calls with the three. That gets it down to five as we're exactly two minutes to go in the basketball game. Maurice Rice playing under pressure as a freshman. Does an excellent job bringing it all the way up himself. He is still in control. One against three. Swings it back outside to Fatty Cunningham. Five-point lead for Strawberry Mansion. They're going to look for a good shot at this point. They get the ball to Omar Thomas. Creates inside and creates successfully. And the lead is at seven with 1.37 to go. Purcell close battling back at the other end for the Bulldogs. He goes into the lane. Up. Gets one bounce, but not the bounce that puts it in. And Omar Thomas with the rebound. He is fouled from behind by Sean McKee, who is visibly upset at the situation that now finds his Simon Gratz Bulldogs down by seven. 49 to 42, 126 to go, and Manchin in good shape, but they're in even better shape if they can make a couple of foul shots here. Well, it's closeout time now with 126 to go. Manchin 49, Gratz 42, foul shooting. Your primetime player who has stepped up at prime time and made the big plays he now has a chance to close it out. Make the foul shots. That's the way you close it out. Omar Thomas will have two if he made both, and that lead would be all the way up to nine. It's an eight as he cleanly nailed that one. And just as we wait for his second free throw attempt here, kudos to the public league and the Philadelphia School District Superintendent David Hornbeck here. But this is the best in Philadelphia basketball. We so love having the opportunity to be around these kids. The fans have been outstanding, and the school district police, along with the Temple and Philadelphia police, doing a great job. What a day as we watch Strawberry Mansion get up by nine now, and their fans are starting to celebrate what looks very good. Purcell Coles loses that ball out of bounds. They say it went off of Omar Thomas though so right now Simon Gratz will have the basketball down nine with 125 to go in the public league title game Purcell Coles had 20 against Alney picked the game up a little bit in the first half late early in the second half as well but there Sean McKee made the three but after he had traveled so Strawberry Mansion you talk about closing the deal a minute ago Sonny they have the ball nine point advantage 120 to go and Sean cannot afford to make that kind of mental mistake, and he really hasn't been on top of his game in terms of making the decision that needed to be made. And Sean McKee getting visibly upset. He is the kind of a young man who can do such a good job. We're going to take a look once again at the traveling call, but Sean McKee, he'll be contributing to some team at the next level. He's that kind of a player, but right there before he nailed the three, he traveled, and Sean McKee's great, great career at Simon Gratz is over for all intents and purposes in this public league game. Well, you know, you can be emotional, but you also have to be in a situation where you can control some of that emotion. And in the case of Sean, who is a leader and one of the superb lead guards that we have in the Delaware Valley area, he has allowed the Strawberry Mansion uh, team to disrupt some of his continuity. And right now, Strawberry Mansion is doing what they had not done earlier in the basketball game. That's and Nate Smigel, who's been with uh, LB for years and years and years, 
He sits down at the end of the bench, but the reality, he and Ellaby are inseparable. Patty Cunningham trying to make it an 11-point advantage. He makes one out of two. It's 10 points, 110 to go in the ball game. Steal by Maurice Rice. Could be showtime. Maurice Rice up and good. And just like that, Manson is getting ready to celebrate a public league championship. They're up 12. We come under one minute to go. Purcell Coles will go to the foul line right there. But once again, what a job by Strawberry Manson. And what's perhaps most impressive, Sonny, is they withstood the Simon Gratz comeback. They came out strong in this game. They had those early leads at 10-1 to 1 and 17-7, to 7, but then Gratz deliberately getting back in the basketball game. They cut into it. They're only down a couple at the half. They come out of the second half mansion and right away get it back up to close to double digits and then double digits. Very, very impressive in withstanding the charge. It was to their credit that they did all you said, but they also had Omar Thomas who stepped up big time. He started to make some foul shots. The foul shots helped him get his confidence, and then he began to make some big plays, the offensive rebound and put it back in, and then certainly that triggered it for everybody else because then Maurice Rice picked it up a little bit, and some of the other players kind of chipped in, so they've been able to do a great job. Purcell calls with one or two, but Gratz retains possession right now as they're going to just be throwing up the threes right there. Michael Cuffey does not get it right there. And Levi Lamar at the other end does. And like that, Mansion 56, Simon Gratz 43. The Knights of Strawberry Mansion High School are going to win their first ever public league championship. And what a job by Coach Gerald Hendricks. He has got to be so proud of the way this team has responded to the fact that people for the first time picked them to win the public league. They were the favorites coming out of the gate. Yes, they have been the top team throughout the season, but the way that Gratz had been closing at the end of the year, and the fact that Gratz has been in championship play 11 out of the last 12 years, you would think that Gratz might have had an advantage because of the experience factor, but also Manchin has a senior-laden team, and then there's the familiarity North Philadelphia guys playing against both schools are in North Philadelphia. They play against one another all the time. So there is, as on uh, Purcell Cole's uh, tattoo, no fear. I Absolutely. know you. Let's play. Call with two right there. He has 17 points, but Gratz has 45. The mansion's 56. And let's talk a little bit more about the great tradition of community basketball. Sonny Hill, I know you're too modest to admit it, but you have done so much in terms of using basketball as a vehicle for youngsters, not just in North Philadelphia, but throughout this great city, the public league and the Catholic league, kids alike, giving them the opportunity as we look at the very, very touching story of Kyle Hendricks. The son of Gerald Hendricks was an Olympic caliber swimmer in the PDR program paralyzed in an accident but he is such an upbeat young man and he is so proud of his dad and his strawberry mansion team coached by his dad as fatty cunningham extends the lead to 57 45 but as you look at gerald hendricks talk a little bit about the community well and it's what a this commitment means. i mean if you look at gerald hendricks and you look at his son kyle they have to get up at 5 30 in the morning just to prepare to get ready for the day because of kyle's inability to do things for himself so that's a commitment and the commitment is always about the kids it's never about the individual. It's never about Sunny Hill or the Sunny Hill League or the people that's involved. It's about our kids and the ones that go on to become successful. Michael Blackshear Sr., good example. Purcell calls with the air ball. We've seen Messiah Reeves score earlier. He misses on the follow shot right there. And with an 11-point lead, Maurice Rice takes it easily to the hoop. And it's 60-47 as we count down. Six, five, four. We're going inside three. And just like that, the Strawberry Mansion fans storm in the court here at the Leah Chorus Center. As your final, Strawberry Mansion 60, Simon Gratz 49, and for Gerald Hendricks, after almost two decades of coaching at Strawberry Mansion, his first ever public league title. And what a job, what a proud moment for a school that, as you have always talked about it, they also have the middle school at the same location. It is a true community high school, and now it is a true public league championship high school. And it's good for the Strawberry Mansion, because this is the first time they've gotten here, they've won a championship. It's a downer for Gratz, but the reality is that they had a team that was an overachiever this year, didn't really have the normal marquee players, didn't have the height, the dominant players, but again, the Ellaby system works, and you gotta feel good about the fact that you got to the championship round, and now you're playing your neighborhood rivals, and the neighborhood rivals named Strawberry Mansion was able to be victorious. And there he 
just enjoying the moment as we look at Al Schreier, the veteran Temple PR man who's done a great job of taking care of the media. And he's right in front of our good friend there, Kyle Hendricks, the young man whose dad got the job done all season long, but in particular today. And we talked about it kind of like a, a heavyweight fight. They took Rax's best punch because believe me momentum had swung back in the favor of the Bulldogs but Strawberry Mansion kept their poise they did what they had to do and got back about the business of scoring points in a very effective way at the offensive end well I thought starting the fourth quarter and then as we got midway through the fourth quarter when it was a three-point difference it certainly appeared that Gratz would be able to impose its will but it was the little things it was the foul shooting it was the lack of the turnover from Strawberry Mansion which the coach talked about at halftime. He said, if I can stop turning the ball over, Rats turned the ball over, didn't make foul shots, and therefore it caused their demise. The score difference is not as great as it would be, or it is, if it had been more of a game that Rats would want to play. What a job by that man, Sonny Hill. Gerald Hendricks, and we'll be back with more.